so people are streaming in. We have uh, currently over 30 people participating. Okay, I think it's a good time to start. It's a little bit over. Uh, now it's one minute over and, and uh, there will be perhaps some people still so, uh, joining, but uh, you are very welcome to this webinar for mastering PEPOL e-invoicing. And uh, congratulations for your excellent, excellent webinar selection. Harri Korhonen is unfortunately sick at the moment. My name is Jyrki Potteri and uh, I'm replacing Harri now. In, in this uh, meeting. In case you will have questions or comments, kindly use chat and, and then in the end there will be a possibility for you to as well uh, ask uh, verbally those questions. Just for your information as you notice that we are recording this webinar and, uh, and then later on we will send link to all registered participants uh, to, to see the content. Uh, in case there's someone who cannot be participating. So we have uh, with me here Henrik Müller and uh, Henrik is, is a senior professional and uh, focusing in invoicing services being Nordic product manager for that and it's part of this uh, big business information exchange services what we in Tieto Every have for B2B integration and Henrik has uh, roles both on Europe level and, and country level and actively participating in open people community. So we have only 30 minutes, so uh, please, Henrik, could you kindly continue and start the presentation? Yes, thank you, Jyrki. And yeah, good, mor uh, good morning, but yes, good morning to, to everyone. And nice to see that so many could join us. This is the short agenda for the meeting, uh, or the webinar, so, so uh, hopefully we can squeeze it all in. I will just start with some short information regarding Tier to Every and the Business Information Exchange, or BIX as we call it. Uh, Tier to is the largest uh, IT company in the Nordic region with approximately 24,000 employees. We have uh, experts across several different countries and domains and industries. With uh, BIX services, you are a part of a global network and will be able to uh, receive and send not only invoices, but also all kinds of business documents. Uh, and here are yeah, some of the different types you can uh, use us for. But let's start with, with PEPOL, uh, what it is. Um, open PEPOL or PEPOL uh, is three different things that, that can um, be meant when saying PEPOL. And I try to, to go through them all because it can be sometimes confusing in a way. First, it's the PEPOL governance arrangements. It's the PEPOL network and the PEPOL formats or business interoperability specification or, or BIS, PEPOL BIS is often used. Uh, so I will just try to, to explain the difference between the, the, the things. Uh, the PEPOL governance arrangements, that is a set of legal arrangements and policies between all the PEPOL stakeholders that defines the rules of how everyone cooperates. It's a comprehensive interoperability framework that everyone must agree upon. Everything is handled by the organization Open Peppel, which is a non-for-profit organization based in Brussels, Belgium. It's our led, it is led by Secretary General André Hoddevik from Norway. Uh, Open Peppel are then assisted around, assisted around the world by several Peppel authorities, which is often local government agencies. Uh, in Finland, the, the state treasury has taken a part as PEPOL authority. Uh, all over the world, there are altogether 20 countries with PEPOL local authorities, which means that the use of PEPOL in these countries are well established and legally secured, and they have sufficient governmental backup and support. Uh, yesterday, there were 510 members of Open PEPOL, 
uh, form 43 countries. Um, so it's, it's, it's being used not only in Europe as um, designed from the beginning, now every, all over the world is, is using it. There are local authorities in uh, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, um, and, and uh, you can see the, the dark blue countries here. Um, upon joining uh, Open Peppel, each service provider must go through a certification process and when completed they are approved to exchange documents with every participant on the NetPeople network. Uh, which takes us to the second Peppel, the, the Peppel network. Uh, the uh, uh, agreements I mentioned earlier states what kind of standards everyone must follow both technically and format wise which means there is no need for bilateral agreements and testing between the service provider. Once you have signed with Open Peppel and gone through the certification, you are good to go. Uh, this part of the, of the diagram, this is between the end customers and the service provider. This can be almost <laughs> whatever you as a customer wants. Um, this is your, um, ERP or software you are using and your invoice format. Uh, when this is sent to the service provider, for example, to every, uh, then we need to follow the earlier stated format. So the, the format exchange between the service provider that is heavily controlled and standardized and is mandatory for, for our service providers to follow. Um, the only thing the sender need is the PEPOL ID or the, the electronic address of the recipient. There is no need to keep track of service provider or, or format your business partner needs. This is handled by the technology. I will show you some example of this later on. At Yeto Every, we, we act as a service provider, both sending and receiving documents on the PEPOL network. And, and for invoices and, and supply chain and payments and, and a lot of different document types. Uh, when we receive the, the document from the sender, our software does a, what's called a lookup from something called an SML, that's a central address book. Uh, then we get information about the recipient, what kind of formats and standard they can receive. And then we, we send it over to the service provider on the other side, and then they will send it to their customers in the um, last corner of, of, of this network. So we do not need to know what kind of format this part, um, you, this part, this corner does not need to know what this corner needs and handles. That is handled by the, this, the central technology here. Uh, it, yeah. Uh, I, I can talk about this how <laughs> for for long, but I I will try to stop there. I think that's the best. Uh, if you have question about it, please feel free to contact me later on. Uh, the last part that is the document formats exchange between the service providers. Open Peppel organization they maintains and refines and develops the Peppel business to accommodate new market requirements. Uh, when Peppel started, there was I'd say, only procurement for, for post-award and pre-award, but nowadays there are also Peppel logistics and Peppel payments. Um, the most, most used domain, so to say, is the post-award, and post-award is uh, after, how to say, the, the contract has be, been signed. Pre-award is before the contract between buyers has been signed. Um, and it, of course, you don't need a, a contract either, but, but that was the, the distinction between the, the different domains. Uh, and, and as you can see, there are invoices and response, credit notes, orders, a lot of, of, uh, of uh, different things there. And, and every time, everything then is have their own Peppel BIS, so it's standardized. So it's really easy to start um, exchanging it. As a recipient in Peppel, you must be able to handle at least the current version of a Peppel document, BIS. Uh, for now, for invoice example, it's the Peppel BIS billing 3.0. Uh, 
Uh, you can also receive older standards, but you must, as, as a baseline, always um, uh, receive the PEPL, the standard PEPL BIS. Uh, every single document also that is sent to the PEPL network has to be uh, validated with the Schematron. So, so as a sending service provider, you are obliged to, to only send uh, correct versions of the uh, documents to, to the, the receiving service provider. Um, yeah, that's of that. And, and why should you use PEPL instead of... of uh, something that already works. Uh, the real advantage of PEPL, I think, comes with the interoperability. As I mentioned before, all stakeholders in PEPL community follows the same set of rules and standards and technology. Uh, the recipients, they publish their receiving abilities and then everyone can start sending. No testing and no agreements and no dialogue before. Uh, since the PEPL IDs often are based upon business IDs, the lookup can be automated within the ERPs. No need for external lookup services and, and such. Uh, if a recipient change service provider, the PEPL IDs follows the customers and the issuer doesn't even need to change anything in their side. They won't probably even notice the switch of a service provider. So it's it's really easy for, for the end users to to, to use PEPL. Um, I mentioned there is no need for external lookup services, and now I will show you external <laughs> lookup services, because what you need in PEPL is the PEPL ID. And if you don't know that, like they, if they have several um, PEPL IDs for, for um, different uh, locations and such, there is a service called PEPL directory, and in PEPL directory, you can use that in, in, uh, to, to look up the, the PEPL IDs. It's like the, the, the e-registry in Finland. Um, so you can use free text instead of, of, of numbers. Um, uh, I will show you an example here from Tieto uh, Every Finland's um, entry looks in the PEPL directory. The, the PEPL ID um, uh, is, uh, everything here is searchable. So if you know our um, your geographical information, you can actually search here for, for our address and you will get the, the um, find the PEPL ID. Um, there is also a possibility that this kind of information is up to the service provider, how much we publish in the PEPL directory. Uh, but at least the the name of the company is is um, that that's mandatory. Everything else is optional. But you can put as much information in in the Purple directory as you want. Uh, the first part, then this part is the the Purple ID. The first part is called an ICD code, um, uh, and this is the, what uh, the uh, how to say the invoicing address, so the, the Apple IDs consist of two parts. Uh, in this case, 0037, that means that this this ID after here is, oh, sorry, uh, is the, the UVT code. There are several different ICD codes, and 0007, for example, is the Swedish start of the Apple ID. It, States that afterwards it comes a, or a Swedish organization number. You can have a GLN or EAN number, then it's 0088. So it, the PEPL ID can be a lot of different types. You can use an IBAN number or you can use a uh, Norwegian organization number and such. So it, there is a lot of possibilities there. Uh, from April uh, 1st, uh 2024 it is yeah uh, the the finnish people authority have decided that the people ids in finland should look like this instead the icd should be um uh, 0216 before the, the uvt code instead this is mainly to to how to say 
decrease the confusion. It has been a lot of different ways of, of stating the, the last OVT code in, in PEPOL in, in Finland. So now instead, no, 0216 should be the prefix or ICD code. This is how uh, this view shows what kind of documents we can receive. In this case, we can receive a catalog, we can receive a PEP bill, Apple BIS billing, the, the invoice. Uh, we have also possibilities to receive the Singapore version of the Apple BIS and so on. So depending on what kind of business document the receiving receiver can receive, they we publish that. And then the sending um, service points know what to send to us. But the baseline is always the Apple, the standard versions of the Apple BIS. Uh, when speaking of PEPOL, the European norm is often mentioned. Uh, I'm shortly going to mention the, the, the difference between the norm and the standard. The e-invoicing directive from the European Union uh, states that all public entities must be able to receive and handle an invoice that follows the European norm, uh, 16931. The, the norm establishes common rules and formats for electronic invoices, but there is no actual standard that calls uh, that is called uh, EN. It's, it's EN compliant. Uh, TAPS XML version 3 and Finvoice, they are all example of invoice formats that follow the norm. Uh, but in PEPOL, it's only possible to exchange the PEPOL BIS in the PEPOL network for now. Maybe later on, uh, Finvoice or TAPS XML may be a standard, but as a recipient, you must always handle Peppel BIS as the baseline, as I mentioned before. So there is maybe no need to, to have the, lo the local formats. Um, also, supply chain documents are aligned with the norm. So, so orders and, and the catalogs, they use the same um, wording or the name of the field, so to say, so it's easy to, to use them all. Uh, the fun part of e-invoicing regulation across Europe, there you have probably read and heard a lot of, the, of this. Um, and first of all, why is there so many regulations? And, and the short answer is VAT and tax. Uh, the VAT gap uh, in Europe is almost 93 billion euros that tax that isn't paid. So that's why the invoicing are, are covered by so many, starting to be covered by so many regulations. Uh, 93 billion, that's 9% of the EU, EU budget. Um, in Finland, you have a 1.3% gap. So it's not a problem. Sweden, we have 2%. So we have no actual need of, of regulations for, for the invoicing. We focus on the business side, how to automate and make things easier. Uh, France, they have 13 billion cap, and the first country to, to make it um, uh, mandatory to send e invoices, Italy, they had a 26 billion euro gap. So that's why they started to, to have a, a man, mandate of what e-invoicing. Uh, the, the, the challenge with, with this, this uh, across Europe is that they have all different timelines, they have different technology and different <laughs> formats, will, which make it kind of hard for companies uh, that operate in several jurisdictions. Uh, so, so instead of allowing each country to create their own uh, technology and, 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 and solutions for, for registering the e-invoices, the European no Union now has published something called the VIDA. It's, called, it's an initiative called VAT in the Digital Age, and that will affect businesses across all member states. VIDA proposes to remove current restrictions for EU countries and introduce a, a domestic, something called CTC or continuous transaction controls. 
Uh, this will make it easy for all countries to introduce mandatory invoicing without asking for, for derogative from the VAT directive. The VAT directive within the EU states that actually before you send an invoice, you had to ask the recipient uh, if it's okay to send an invoice. An invoice. Most of the European countries has this. It's a strange old <laughs> regulation, but it, it this will will uh, be removed this year, hopefully. Uh, Vida aims to to make it easier and not so complex and align the technology used today. So uh, countries like Italy, where you have you have to upload an invoice first to the state servers and wait for an OK, and then you can download it and, um, and the recipient can download it from there. And Poland has another system where the sender has to upload to the system and hopefully the recipient gets it or you have to send it by yourself to them. So there is a lot of different ways of, of invoicing now across Europe. And what WIDA uh, try, uh, will fix if it gets approved is that everyone must use the same um, technologies. They can't, they, they are not allowed to have this kind of clearance model where, where, where a state agency or government um, holds the invoice before it's sent. They should just get an, an, a copy or something like that. So the, the invoice flow doesn't uh, stop. As I mentioned, unfortunately nothing with VIDA is decided yet, but hopefully it would make it easier and not so complex with aligning the technologies used. If it comes into play 2028, we hope that the e-invoicing become, becomes the norm between all countries. Uh, the digital reporting requirements that it has with uh, transactions from another between country borders, that, then it's also ma made um, online. Today, you have to wait up to two or three weeks before you report everything that is sent across borders. Uh, if VIDA comes to play, you have to do it online within two days, so it will make everything really um, easy. And it will also be really easy for, for the member states to uh, mandate the electronic invoicing. Uh, for for domestic transactions transactions, sorry. So that that is some, uh, some short information about the VIDA and the e invoicing regulation. Uh, there are a lot of things happening uh, regarding this, and we are we are uh, how to say uh, harvesting the information and trying to to compile it into some some easy, understandable and readable information. We will uh, keep your, your customers updated with this uh, since um, even if VIDA is, is published or, or how to say it, it, there are information out about VIDA, there are still nothing, there are very few dates set in stone regarding this. Some of you have heard about the information about France and they just postponed their their timeline with two years, I think. Uh, this uh, next summer was uh, the first date they had set that uh, it was mandatory for everyone to start sending, sorry, to start receiving e-invoices in France. That was postponed now with, oh, with two years. So that's uh, uh, that's um, just uh, hot, hot of the, out of the presses. Just now, and Germany will also start as I showed, and so on. So um, we will we will keep you updated. Uh, and what can we do more? Yeah, we can of course connect you to Peppol and both as senders and receivers with all kind of business documents. We operate with invoicing and supply chain. We operate also in the uh, Peppol payments uh, and Peppol e-government in, in, in Norway. And we will also support a new domain, Peppo Logistics, where uh, the offshore and construction industry has, has already signed up. So they are have started exchanging business documents uh, that are, are connected. 
we are, uh, as Jürgen mentioned in the uh, beginning, we are active in a lot of different work groups within Open Peppel and we provide business knowledge for, from uh, from our side and, and we get information back from Open Peppel that we can use in our development of the services. So that is what I had now. I There are time for questions if there are anyone uh, or any there. So, so thank you for your time and, and hope you have some questions or, or comments about this. Thank you, Hen Henrik. We don't have any questions at the moment in chat. Would there be any from participants? A little bit silent. Uh, so uh, I would like to ask that uh, in practice, all the organizations in Finland having more than 10 employees are already using e invoicing. So can this PayPal be added as an additional invoice exchange set channel, or is it needed to replace everything in the beginning? No, it can be added as an extra service. Uh, I haven't heard anything yet about. Uh, uh, some legal changes regarding that. Finland is is so is so far with the how to say have come so far with the uh, e invoicing already, uh, but the main uh, I think uh, was yesterday or or before day before that the 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 state treasury had an information session regarding upcoming regulations, the the purchasing from the. Uh, State government, uh, the state agency will be done uh, through PEPOL. So you, you have to be able to receive uh, public um, uh, yeah, purchasing documents and catalogs and orders through PEPOL if you want to do business with the with the state. From from the the healthcare regions and the and the uh, what's it called municipalities. They are optional as of now. Maybe they will also be mandated to, to use PEPOL. Uh, in Sweden, we have it. Um, the, the public sector needs to use PEPOL. Uh, I don't know where, where, where Finland will go yet. And it's it's very natural to, to have a supply chain because of automation <laughs> of purchase invoice handling, comparing with the purchase orders and delivery information. So what are, there's a question that what are alternatives alternatives for people solution? So if not people, what what then? Then it's bilateral agreements. Mm. We uh, get every we sign an agreement with another operator in, in Spain or whatever, or in Finland, of course. Uh, and then we have to agree upon uh, 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 cooperation standards and such. Uh, this is in a way working in today, but with with Peppel, there is even it's so much easier to to just start. We we have our certification process in in place, so. Uh, then we are, are now, there are over 400 service provider within Peppel to, to just sign with Open Peppel. It's so much, so much easier. Otherwise, we had to, <laughs> to sign with each and all, each operator and, and service provider, and that's, that's not manageable. Um, so, uh... Then it's it so that uh, are you forced to use this EU norm with PEPOL? In a way, yes, since PEPOL BIS follows the EU norm and you have to to uh, to use PEPOL BIS as a baseline. Yes, you must use the PEPOL norm, but there is uh, also other um, standards available within PEPOL like uh, uh, in Sweden, we have the Svea Factura that was that is not EU, EU compliant, but you can publish the, the Svea Factura. I know, oh, actually, you can't do that anymore, but let's say you have an invoicing standard that is not EU compliant. You could publish the recipient possibilities of that in your endpoint, but you have to also have to, to, to use um, uh, the Peppel BIS. So, Yes, ish, <laughs> or yes yeah. or no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah. So. We we may take the next then and uh, yeah. the last one. How common is it uh, for a company to act as an access point uh, or not using a service provider? 
it's not that common. Large companies can absolutely build their own, um, I'd say, solution for, for Peppel services. You have to be a member of Open Peppel. You have to pay your member fee. So you have to be quite large to, to how to say, save those money to, to not use the service provider. But uh, I know uh, there are some really big companies acting as a, but not not that money. Mm. So the conclusion for, for the first question was that uh, there is not uh, really kind of a competitor for new practices uh, to people. So people is the only viable. Uh, for now, the yes, yes. Yeah, um, yeah right. Yeah. But there are, there are now, some yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> now we are one minute past and, and uh, there was uh, still one question. So so very quickly, we have experienced some difficulties with the receiver's uh, requirements that are not that are often more detailed than people's states. So so just to comment that uh, it can be that uh, that um, a receiver would like to have some kind of uh, business references. Yeah. And, and request those which are not mandatory in PayPal. As long as you fulfill the standard used, you, you can use PayPal. But um, if you oh. have more reference, that, that between the, the, how to say, you and your customers, unfortunately, it would be really yes. good to say, follow the standard and, and you're mm. good to go. Yeah, so business partners uh, can mutually uh, agree about yeah. uh, additional references and yeah. uh, some receivers may have uh, mandatory requirements for additional references. Yeah, but they can't stop the invoices in no, Apple. No, no, so people will, will anyway send those. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, sorry about being two minutes late, but uh, this was all and, and, uh, and uh, you can send uh, more questions or comments to those. Ja Jyrkille voi lähettää myös suomeksi. And uh, it was not comment about you, Henrik. <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, thank you. So. Thank you very much. Um, and, please um, feel free to reach out if there are any more questions or comments. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And bye. Thank you.